started, um, Al uh, here tonight asked me if my set was suitable for children. The answer to that is definitely not. Um, children make me very uncomfortable, which I feel is quite taboo, like as a young woman. Um, <laughs> but also as a poet, because people, people, <laughs> people come up to me um, sometimes, this has actually happened, and they're like, oh my god, you're a poet. That's such a coincidence, because I have children. <laughs> chocolate and shouting and that is literally all, <laughs> literally all. Um, but I did, um, I was once uh, at a festival giving out free poems, you know, on the corner, pushing lines, poetry joke, um, and this man came up and he was like, <laughs> and he was like, oh, will you write a poem for my grumpy five-year-old, Liam? I was like, Okay, um, like my mum has another expression as well as I won't ever get to, which is face like a slapped ass. Like that. Um, so Liam was pouting up at me. I was like, oh, why is Liam so grumpy though? And he was like, oh, well, I let his sister get ahead of tattoo and then I wouldn't let him get one. I was like, that is completely unfair. <laughs> and sexist. Um, and even though I didn't like children, like I looked into Liam's scrumpled up little face and I was like, oh. Like, I remembered all the times when I was little and I'd been thwarted and felt like nobody understood. And so I kind of like resolved, like promised myself that I was going to write Liam a poem that would kind of address this balance in some small way. So I was like, okay, um, come back in 20 minutes. I'll have your poem for you. They came back and um, had this poem that I'd written for him. So I was like, Liam, are you ready? I've written your poem. You think I'm grumpy because of a henna tattoo, but I'm grumpy with you. <laughs> you smell of poo. You're a big doggy do, Dad. Every time that you shout, Liam, it makes me want to scream. <laughs> you are a great big wee bum, Dad. And I was like, ta-da. <laughs> and he looks up with me with these big, beautiful five-year-old eyes and just burst into tears. <laughs> I'm writing a show for the Edinburgh Festival next year. Um, I've called it Lullabies to Make Your Children Cry. <laughs> One thing I've learned from The Apprentice is once you've got a USP, you really want to stick with it. <laughs> um, so um, this is a poem from that show. Um, this poem's called The Little China Figures, and I actually ripped it off Hans Christian Andersen, um, the story. This is one of his. He's really good at heartbreaking. Um, I'm sure you all know. It's brilliant. Read the original Little Mermaid. It's even more upsetting than the original one. Um, but this is, um, this is one about, well, like two little China figures. There were once two little china figures, shepherdess and a chimney sweep. And they lived together in this big, wide, deep glass cabinet, and they got in the habit of talking to each other. And they found out they had loads of things in common, like um, they both really liked to eat standards, both afraid of cats, they both spent their whole lives standing entirely still. But eventually, they fell in love, which often happens, as I'm sure you know, when little china figures can't go anywhere when they're trapped. They have each other. One day, though, the cabinet door was left ajar after the daily dusting, not so far that anyone would notice. Maybe far enough for them. And the chimney sweep immediately thought of the plan and he reached out and took the shepherdess's hand and he said, This is our chance. Let's advance into the unknown, wonderful expanse of the world and we'll dance there together and we'll show our defiance for the something that owns us and we'll never be bored or ever try to buy anyone else again and we'll transcend our circumstance. Let's leave the cabin. Now, the shepherdess is put in a difficult position because she's never really shared the chimney sweep's ambition. She's always been a lot more interested in prettiness and safety, but she loved him. So, Stealing herself, she let herself be stolen and pulled from the shelf and pushed through the crack in the door and along the floor, even though she didn't know exactly what they were leaving for. But when she got up the chimney and she could see the daylight, 
smell the air not laced with perfume and unhappiness, she panicked. And she suddenly realised she wanted home more than freedom and she wanted people to be able to see them rather than the things that they'd done and she'd give up on adventure and knowledge and fun for a place that was hers. And she was crying so hard all the gold came off her sash and she was shaking. And the chimney sweep looked at her. And so for her sake they went home again, even though he knew it was a mistake, but he loved her. They love each other until they break. Thank you.